we were visited by quite a few different seafaring birds. The biggest of these were the black-browed albatrosses and then some of the pectorals also made an appearance. The white chin pectoral which is the bigger bird that you can see here and the smaller little storm pectorals almost dancing on the surface of the water behind the white chin pectorals. Some of the white chin pectorals were looking fairly nervous and it was only when I got into the water that I realized what their concern was. There are quite a few small sharks about in this nice clean warm water and these guys were chasing anything and everything that they could see in the water including some of the birds. All these sharks that we saw earlier on in our trip were all blue sharks. Sharks that get up to about three, three and a half meters. Although all the ones that we saw this morning were only between a meter and a half and two meters, not very big animals. And once you start getting above these sharks, you can see immediately where it gets its name from. A distinctive blue coloration right across the top of its back. These sharks mainly feed on squid and small bony fish and they definitely built for speed and long distance swimming. A very slender looking animal and has some very long but thin pectoral fins. Another one of its main sensory organs is the ampulla of Lorenzini. On the tip of its nose is those tiny little black spots and these are tiny little receptors that pick up any vibration and any distress that they'll sense in the water. While all of this was going on there were quite a few wary looking onlookers or bystanders on the surface just watching and having a good look at what was going on below the, the waterline. And perhaps for good reason they were looking pretty nervous because just below the waterline at about this time probably the most ferocious sharks that I've ever seen in the water made an appearance. This is the Mako shark, a shark that gets up to about three and a half meters long, the fastest swimming fish in the sea. An animal that mainly feeds on fast swimming fish like bonito, yellowfin tuna, sailfish, swordfish, so you can just appreciate the speeds that these animals get up to sometimes 75 kilometers an hour, which is quite remarkable. It was really a fantastic day out at sea, being in nice, clean, warm water and having some very interesting animals around us. We spent a good few minutes on the beach just wondering if it was the right decision to make to go out to sea today. But in the end we decided that we would head to a dive site quite close to home, but one of the deepest dive sites we have here at Sidwana Bay. Two coachmen pretty much guided us onto the reef. As you can see, visibility is reduced to just a few meters. Today we ended up at over recreational dive limits at about 35 meters. Unfortunately, our dive time at this depth is extremely limited and one only has about 12 minutes down here. 
This is the inside ledge of Rooney's and the reef sits at about a meter or a meter and a half above the sand. Here a feather star and a sea star sit together dealing with the surge and a honeycomb mora has found a nice protected hole in the side of the reef as a few cardinals dart in and out. We carried on a little bit further up the reef and there was quite a few fish in midwater. Everything a bit edgy today as the hunting kingfish pass overhead. This black coral tree, although it appears green to the eye, when it's dead the exoskeleton is a black color and is highly sought after for jewelry. Unfortunately, it does take many, many years to grow to attain a tree of this size and therefore was unable to sustain its demand. As we begin our drift down the beautiful seagrass beds, there's a lot of these mangrove snapper here. Now these fish are pretty much endemic to most of our estuaries and they grow up to a healthy 3-4 kilos in size. And just seeing the large numbers of these fish in this area makes me really think that this estuary is in very, very good condition. In the foreground there are a couple of coachmen and there are a couple of other queen fish higher up in the water column. came across this tiny Malabar rock cod. They're quite interesting little fish and they're quite voracious predators. The current has begun to die down quite a bit at the moment and this gives us an opportunity to settle down without being pushed all over the place and observe. It's quite strange and unique behavior. These fish being the predators that they are are quite brazen by nature and they're quite comfortable within human presence. There's absolutely no fear within these fish and quite often they turn to look at themselves in the port I suspect. The sun is beginning to fade in the background and the lights really bring out the color, especially in the grass in the foreground. And this quite interesting behavior continued for about 15 to 20 minutes as this Malabar rock cod just twisted and turned right in front of the camera housing. So eventually after being pretty distracted by the Malabar rock cod, I continued my search and just a little further ahead we came across the tiny patch of cuttlefish eggs. This area used to be probably three square meters of just cuttlefish eggs. At the moment it's reduced to 10 or 15 percent of the original quantity. The eggs that are still here are quite developed and inside one can see the tiny little cuttlefish really beginning to develop. They're exact replicas of the adults. And as I begin to drift a little bit closer to home to end the dive, we came across another type of cuttlefish egg. These are slightly different, they're not tiny single eggs as what we've seen before, which belongs to the pharaoh cuttlefish. These are a different type of squid. These are relatively long finger length tubes and inside we find up to five or six different eggs. These weren't here originally when we dived in this area about a month ago and these have been laid subsequently. And this patch of cuttlefish eggs is probably about one square meter Inside these long tubes you can see there are a couple eggs laid with inside and they're nowhere near as developed as the cuttlefish eggs which we had just been looking at. I suspect these have probably only been laid just a couple days ago. It's quite interesting how two very similar species can lay eggs that look so completely different to each other. This has obviously got something to do with how they've adapted 
to the specific environments.